It has been over 1500 days since Fortnite Chapter 1 ended, but all of the items, weapons, and features haven't been forgotten. So here are 100 things only OGs remember, which brings us back to 2018 when Fortnite dropped the Rock, Paper, Scissors emote. For only 200 V-Bucks, you could go up to a friend and actually play the game. Nowadays, we have synced emotes for this purpose, but back in the day, this didn't exist. So you had to both own it and time it perfectly. Another unique cosmetic was the golf ball, and if you went to Lazy Links, you could really play and get a hole in one. Anyone who uses a snap emote will know this is a Marvel Icon series. But what if I tell you it wasn't always like this? When it first dropped, snap was green rarity, and when the Avengers LTM released, they added an easter egg to do it with Thanos. Fast forward a couple years, and they even changed this to Marvel, making it the only original cosmetic to be converted. One of the most frustrating things was how you couldn't build in a huge POI. Blue Lake was near the center of the map, so you always came to this and were blocked from building. You had to place a floor before the water, and then build a bridge to get across. Another player could easily snipe you out and you'd be a sitting duck. Something you probably don't remember is the power-up LTM. It was only available during 14 days of summer and removed the shield cap, so you could sit around for a whole game building thousands of shield. But even in normal BR, these pots used to be different. During chapter one, we could run around with up to five big shields and minis had a limit of 10. That's not all, nowadays we know them as blue shields and green med kits, but they used to be gray rarity for the longest time. Which makes sense, you can find these everywhere, so they weren't exactly rare. Now everyone knows about the meteor event in season four, while you might think it was just a comet in the sky and a cutscene in the trailer, there was more to this than you'll remember. For the last week, real meteors would fall down from the sky and crash into players. And I always get a ton of nostalgia when I see what the storm used to look like. You don't realize how different it is now until you look at the old hexagon design, and man, I miss this a lot. Lot. Another forgotten LTM is Storm Chaser's Surfing. At the start of the game, everyone got surfboards and could drive around with impulse grenades trying to throw other players in the storm, and why don't they make fun modes like this anymore? We all remember the default skins, they were our first outfits, and there was just something about them that gives you a wave of nostalgia. Maybe it's these health monitors on the wrist. Most people didn't pay attention to these, but they would show a heartbeat detector and every default had one. Something else you won't see in 2023 are animated loading screens. Yeah, these exist and there are only two in existence. Back in chapter one, Lynx and Hybrid got unique loading screens that were fully animated and you could only get them in a battle pass. So if you have these in your locker, don't overlook the rarity. I also love Retail Rose Forgotten Easter Egg. For a short time, there was a huge big mouth Billy Bass on a wall and if you emoted while looking at it, you would start to dance. A total disaster is when they added account merging. With the release of Crossplay, Epic allowed you to merge your Xbox or Switch account with the PS4 one, which would allow you to transfer V-Bucks and cosmetic items into one login. Great idea on paper, but it caused so many people to abuse it and get banned. Everyone's heard about the Galaxy and Iconic skins, which were exclusive to Samsung phones, but nobody paid attention to an obscure collab, the Honor Guard. If you own the View 20, you could log into Fortnite and earn this guy for free. And if you had an Honor 20, you get Wonder. One of the strangest features Epic has ever added totally backfired on them. For a couple days, if you got a friend request, a random woman would tell you in game. If you're a big streamer, this was a nightmare. Aw, you've got a friend request oh, cool. coming. Someone wants to be friends. Why would they add something stupid like that? Why? Hey, yeah, by the way, you could have turned it off. We've yes, Epic, this was a great idea. Thank you so much. Another huge mistake was when they had no cap on ammo. This included rockets, so you could walk into a match, collect a whole inventory of RPGs, and just destroy people with hundreds of rockets. Something we take for granted in Chapter 4 is the ability to swim. This never existed back in the day, so if you fell off the map, you're going straight back to the lobby. It also made getting chests like this one 10 times riskier. One of the coolest items Fortnite has ever added was only available in the Bodyguard LTM. This is the Revive Grenade, and it does exactly what you'd expect, throwing this at any teammate to instantly pick them up from a distance. You probably didn't notice that they got rid of an incredible feature though. In chapter one, when you viewed the map, it showed these lines and grid coordinates for each section. You could use this to tell your teammates exactly where to drop. Nowadays, you have to use a compass or say it's north of a POI, which makes things way more confusing. I actually want this feature back. In fact, you can't even use a compass anymore. They also had an icon for north, east, south, west around the minimap, but I understand why they got rid of this one because it was kind of pointless. Did you know that we never used to have back blings? In the super early days, you couldn't take them off your skin. They were fused with it like a blue squire. There was another hilarious feature during season X, which caused hundreds of pro players to rage quit. One of the rift zones at Greasy Grove was called Taco Time, and it would make everyone dance. All right, boys. 
A few moments later. Everybody loves the feeling of sending gifts to a friend and makes it feel good. But this experience used to be even more personal in chapter two, as you could attach a written message with your gift. I don't know why they removed this, but I do know why Epic got rid of transparent edits. Back in the day when you edited your build, it would be completely see-through on removed areas. So you could hide in a box and just use an edit to peek through a makeshift window. This was insanely overpowered. Kind of like the guided missile launcher, a classic weapon that basically handed you free kills. This was so easy to use. You fired a rocket in the air and controlled it until you landed on an enemy. If this came back in 2023, people would probably crank 90s and block it, but back then, it was so easy to wipe players out. It was also extremely easy to use the vending machines. Right now, you gotta fork out gold to afford anything, and they're usually not worth it. But in chapter one, these would cycle through weapons and allow you to buy them with materials. Everyone saw an item they wanted and immediately went grinding for the right amount of wood or stone to get it. It was awesome. So was the hidden Easter egg near Lazy Lake. In the ground, you could find a small mine with a chest inside, but only after you looked at this POI from a top-down view, you would realize it was a fork knife. Now, one of the first pay-to-win skins ever released were the Green Army Men. It was meant to be a throwback to toy soldiers, except Epic never accounted for the green color. Now, people are buying this and hiding in areas where they would be camouflaged. With updates, Fortnite had to change it and completely nerf the strategy. Now, you've definitely heard of Salty Springs, but at the start of Chapter 1, we never knew its name. This place wasn't called anything for a couple of months, despite being a huge POI. It's like they forgot to come up with the name. Once everyone started landing here and rage quitting, they decided to call it Salty Springs. Another classic POI was Greasy Grove, but halfway through the chapter, they removed this place and we all wanted it back. That's until players found it frozen underneath the ice at Polar Peak. You couldn't really explore it, but there was an even crazier mystery. A 100% guaranteed chest completely impossible to reach. Everyone was trying to break through the ice to no avail until one day a method came out that let you grab the loot by breaking the floor onto a ramp. During Season X, something strange happened. All of a sudden, glitched items were appearing around the map. They looked like crystals from afar, but one once you got close enough, they would turn into a random consumable like vegetables or fruits. Nobody really talked about these and we kind of forgot about them over the years. It's still not as random as the giant toy duck in season nine. Yeah, under the slipstreams in the river, this guy was just chilling. It was a part of the summer update, but I would love to see him on the map permanently. Now imagine what the game would be today without turbo building. Well, we have a glimpse because it wasn't always in Fortnite. Before patch 3.0, there was no turbo building. You had to click for every single piece. So if you feel nostalgic, about how easy things used to be, it's probably because you didn't have pro players cranking 90s in a second. A strat we all used to love was the combination of the shopping carts and a minigun. If you needed to get somewhere but didn't want to drag it around, you could just sit on top and fire at the ground, sending you flying in the opposite direction. While exploring, you might have come across a piano in the middle of nowhere. You could actually jump on these and play the right notes, but this is also part of a challenge. People were landing here trying to get their XP only for other players to jump on the notes and completely ruin the challenge for them. Them. The griefing was off the charts. You definitely were not an OG if you don't remember the old traps. Sure, we had the classics like the spike trap, but others were extremely short-lived. Like the directional jump pad, a classic trickshotting item that people would love to see back. Not to mention traps from Save the World that were brought into BR, like the ceiling zapper and the wall dynamo. Now look, I've been playing since literally day one, but even I forgot about the original inventory design. Feels like it's been the same ever since Fortnite released, but that's not exactly true. For the first couple of weeks, the game looked like this. The inventory was so rushed, they just made the grenade icon a white PNG. One of the rarest skins of all time will never release again, thanks to the Twitch Prime pack from 2018. If you link your Twitch Prime to Epic, you can earn the Havoc outfit and Sub Commander for free. They're only available for a couple of weeks and vanish forever. To this day, they are some of the most sought after outfits of all time. And don't forget about turbo farming. This was a very niche trick in chapter one that let you farm materials super fast. Whether you were spam crouching or jumping with an emoticon, it allowed you to hit the weak points at double the speed. Creators like Tifu, they knew what they were doing. Something you didn't realize was missing is the infamous cartoon trail. You used to have smoke following you while running around, and I forgot about this, but it totally contributed to the nostalgia of chapter one. And so did Westworld. That was the community's name for this western town in the desert, but one building was was more unique than the rest. For some reason, chairs started to pile up in this place until eventually there was no room left. And of course, there's even a fort fight here to introduce the house to players. Now that was an unknown POI, but a more popular drop spot was the prison. A lot of you definitely remember this. It was an unnamed location, yet everyone loved to land here, including me. It was huge with a ton of rooms and chests, but as chapter one went on, it eventually got destroyed and left in ruin. Over in chapter two, you might've forgotten about the Marvel season's most underrated feature. Around the map, Galactus Gorge's 
were attacking people, but you could fight them and this is where things got interesting. After being disabled, these gorgers could be picked up and used in battle as a weapon. And you are definitely a veteran player if you remember Starry Suburbs. I'm not talking about the version from Season X where we had loot stars and an insane gold tack SMG. Starry is actually much older than that. It first appeared in Season 2 as an unnamed location and no one ever really talks about the original, but it was a great place to land. And honestly, I gotta bring up Fortnite's craziest throwable. Back then, all we had were items like the Porta Fort. I mean, yeah, these were cool, but it only threw down a tower. Pretty simple. That's until Playground Mo came along handing us the Spiky Stadium. It spawned a massive arena that was literally the size of a POI, and I have no idea how we didn't crash the servers all the time. Unlike the item that totally broke Fortnite. Smoke grenades were only in for a couple of weeks, and the damage they left is unforgettable. As you'd expect, they made a huge cloud of smoke, which is a cool idea, but it lagged the game so bad. Epic had to remove this due to the backlash, although I hope we get it back in Zero Build one day. One of the earliest rifts in Fortnite was hidden in a basement underneath Wailing Woods. Not many people landed here, and when they did, they were in for a massive surprise. It led to an entire underground complex full of scientific equipment, but more importantly, rifts to other locations. And I don't know if it's just me, but I seriously didn't notice a change to balloons. You would have thought they stayed the same after all these years, until you look back at old footage and realize they're holding it above their head. This blocked you from using guns is super different from the version we have now. One of the cutest POIs we have ever had were these builds spread throughout the island. You'd land here and be able to edit them and customize it, but look from afar and these aren't random builds. They were all in the shape of an animal, whether it was a fox or a llama, they didn't serve much purpose except for looking adorable. Something that worked a little too well is the boogie bomb. This quickly rose to fame as the most annoying Fortnite item of all time because of one reason. Once thrown down, this would affect an enemy for 10 seconds even if you were shooting them. Nowadays, it cancels the animation once they get damaged, but back then, it was unstoppable. Almost as annoying as grenades and rockets. For just a few days, Epic changed explosives to penetrate structures. This meant you could fire a rocket next to a build, and it would explode outside the box, but still damage enemies. It was such a controversial change that they even had to ask players on Reddit if they should remove it or not. The answer? Overwhelmingly, yes. There is a feature I can't explain, though, and it's the secret name of Coral Castle. Yeah, I know everyone hates this place, but when it first got added, it wasn't even called that. For some reason, people loaded in, looked at the map, and were introduced to Coral. Around the same time, we had Coral Buddies on the island. They were adorable, a part of a special challenge that let you use materials to evolve their society. This upgraded them all the way from the Stone Age to a modern day city. Eventually, they developed a nuclear weapons program to try and defend themselves from outsiders, only for it to literally blow up in their face. From Coral Buddies messing up to Epic's huge mistake, Shadow Stones were a big problem in Season 6. You could use a glitch to turn completely invisible, ruining lobbies for everyone. A fun fact that even OG players don't know about is the original name for V-Bucks. Ever since day one, they've been called this, but during development, they were actually going to call them Battle Bucks. Eee. Speaking of old discoveries, one of the first gliders in Fortnite was hidden in the season shop. You had to get to level 25 just to have the chance to buy this thing. It was supposed to be exclusive to the shop, only for Epic to accidentally bring it back, causing a huge controversy. If you had trouble getting to level 25 back in the day, these would have helped you out. Everyone knows about the battle pass tiers hidden in loading screens, but a lot of people forget about XP coins. They were spread around the map, but you could be minding your own business before coming across a giant XP coin. Honestly, the feeling was amazing. They're almost as old as the OG submachine gun. This is such a classic weapon, and it sadly never returned, probably because it was terrible. But well, that still lasted longer than Fortnite's rarest item. The Eye of the Storm Tracker is a backpack that was only in game for 30 minutes. They accidentally added this, causing a few players to get their hands on it. They let you view the next storm phases with no effort, and Epic straight up panicked, removing this immediately. Now you might think that Avengers was the first ever collab, and while that's kinda true, there was still an insane crossover in the same month BR released. Epic invited a ton of content creators to be added to the game, with exclusive banner icons for their logos, like Vanoss Gaming, Mucel, and even PewDiePie. You could wear these banners in Battle Royale, making them the rarest and the first collab. An experience uh, you didn't want to try is the swing set of death. In Greasy Grove, this swing was the only object with physics enabled. No other item could be pushed around like this, and for some reason, this freaked out the anti-cheat. Epic just assumed you were teleporting around, kicking, or even banning players for quote-unquote hacking. Wait. What? I got banned. I just got banned. 
thankfully they came back, unlike the forgotten currency of Fortnite. Long before gold existed, they collaborated with Borderlands, adding cash. You couldn't spend it like you can with gold, but it was still pretty cool for its time. Things get disturbing though when you head over to Sunny Steps, as this POI held a dark secret. You could find a llama being cooked and eaten alive with its skeletal remains above a campfire. And back in 2018, we got the very first April Fools in Fortnite. They don't do this anymore, but to celebrate the occasion, Epic decided to prank players in the best way. Without telling anyone, they changed impulse grenades to have 10 times more power, causing people to launch themselves straight to their deaths. Things got even worse with Boogie Bombs receiving super jumps, so all the tryhards trying to get an easy kill were trolled. It wasn't the only time Epic pranked players. Over at Dusty Divin and Greasy Grove, we found ice cream trucks that had 100,000 health. Kinda felt like a glitch, but one of them was making chest noises, so we spent forever trying to break it. Once the van was finally gone, you either got a chest or nothing at all. Now you'll know about the OG Tac shotgun, but you might not remember its hidden secret. This gun had a screen on the side that you couldn't view while in third person. It wasn't until people saw the concept art or went into replay mode that they realized it had a game of snake on the side. Maybe it's just me, but I felt like we were all obsessed with Fortnite China back in the day because of just how different it was. Thanks to the strict gaming laws, it had no microtransactions, challenges to earn V-Bucks, and exclusive skins. Everyone went crazy over this, with updates always adding something unique, like the removal of Skull Trooper and Mystique's back bling turning into a ball. Now, sadly, it was shut down in 2021, but a feature that had to be removed was OG Live Events. One of the coolest parts about these were how they took place in real matches. You could genuinely be playing a regular game of VR only for a rocket to take off or a cube to spawn. Nowadays, we have dedicated playlists with immunity, but back then, it caused a disaster, with a world record for solo eliminations being broken by a griefer. As for the most forgotten collab in history, we have the Kingsman Umbrella. It got added with basically no announcement. They didn't make a trailer or anything, people just logged in and found a crossover item. It could be used for gliding, attacking, and blocking, which made it super unique, but it was mysteriously never seen again. Epic also quietly shut down a tournament. Friday Fortnite was a huge fan-created competition that kickstarted the careers of people like Tifu and Mongrel. At one point, the tournament was pulling more viewers than The Walking Dead and existed long before official competitions like FNCS. Like I said, sadly, Epic shut it down. Thankfully though, they kept a glitch in the game that is still around to this day. Rocket riding was actually never intended. This was discovered by total accident, yet players loved it. The response was so positive that Epic was basically forced to keep it in. And now, in 2023, you could practically rocket ride anything, from battle bus rockets to the Cybertron cannon. And that's not even the weirdest item. There was once a random mythic that no one remembers. In the Impossible Escape LTM, you could find the Raptor Claw. Sounds like a weapon, right? No, it was a useless quest item that you had to deliver to an NPC. Because of how meaningless this is, most players never even knew it existed just like they don't know about Fortnite on a disc. As a free game, you wouldn't expect this to be on store shelves, but for the first couple of weeks, it was. There are people out there who seriously own Fortnite for Xbox One, and it sells on eBay now for thousands of dollars. Over in Season 8, you'll remember the Unvaulting event, but there was a whole buildup that brought the community together. Puzzles appeared around the map, asking us to emote or pickaxe runes with millions of health to move it. Eventually, this all led up to the unlocking of the vault. One of my personal favorite OG items is also a reference to Metal Gear Solid. Creeping cardboard was randomly added in 2020, allowing us to hide inside a box and throw down for extra camouflage. Not only was this a nod to Solid Snake's iconic tactic, but it was also a pretty decent strategy if you were a noob. For anyone still in the mood to prank players, you were actually able to harass your own teammates. For a massive chunk of the first season, team killing was enabled and it was chaotic. People would wipe out their own squad either as a joke or, let's be honest, it was to steal their loot. That's because arguing over a rare item was way more deadly back then. Dying to that sucks, but it would be even worse with the Star Wand pickaxe. In Chapter 4, this is simply known as an item that sweats use, but it had a more sinister purpose in 2019 when people realized how destructive it was. The Star Wand, for no reason, was able to deal 56 damage. You could knock someone in only a few hits, or if you got lucky enough to headshot them, it could take players out in seconds. A feature that was completely forgotten was punch cards. These were really helpful in Chapter 2, helping us get a ton of XP simply for playing the game. Now they've been replaced with milestones, which are arguably super Super boring in comparison. But we did get a ton of excitement from Chapter 2's traps. A lot of these went under the radar, like the fire trap, which could burn down a build in seconds, or the poison dart that would literally shoot marshmallows on enemies. 
still not as annoying as stretched res. Pro players found a way to edit their file settings and glitch the game to give them an advantage. Made every stream look warped, but they claim people were easier to hit with a higher FOV. Whether that was true, we don't exactly know, but Epic was concerned enough to ban it anyway. Just like they were worried about the controversy surrounding police cars. In 2020, we had a lot of things happening around the world and it caused Epic to move them into the vault. We haven't seen them since, but there were two different versions over the years that never got to be drivable. They've appeared in trailers like the Futurama collab, causing speculation that they would return, but uh, I'm not holding my breath. Let's take it back to the first ever secret area in Fortnite. Near Tomato Town, there was a tunnel that cut through a cliff. It was totally normal looking, but if you broke the wall, it revealed a hidden area with chests and ammo boxes. Since this day, we have been keeping an eye out for more secret rooms. Speaking of records, the Icon series didn't actually begin with Ninja. It all started in the Season 3 Battle Pass. There is an emoticon that simply looks like a math equation until CDN the third came across it. <gasps> no, they didn't. Oh, no, no, no way. way. No, they didn't. Open bracket, plus sign, close bracket. Oh. Let's go. Wait, well, look, what it's, look, look what it says. Positivity, have a phenomenal gaming experience. Let's go. Oh. And if you don't know CD in the third, let's just say he's the guy who exposed how OP pump shotguns used to be. 24, I'll take that. I'll take that, Chris. What's up, cousin? Let's go! Yeah, they can do max damage from across the map. I mean, this wasn't even a shotgun anymore. It was a sniper. One of the craziest facts is how the suppressed pistol and boogie bomb are older than tilted towers. Yeah, this wasn't always around, despite it feeling like it lasted all of chapter one. Tilted was added in season two, and before then, the area was just a huge open plot of land. Was it the only thing missing back in the day if you ran out of materials, it wouldn't automatically switch to the next one. So you could be building only to die to fall damage out of nowhere. Some chapter two players will definitely miss side grading though. This is a pretty forgotten feature that only lasted a couple of seasons, but instead of improving your weapon's rarity, you can swap your items out for a completely different one. People love this, and maybe it'll come back in the future just like OG Factories, the most famous classic drop spot of Fortnite. If you played in 2018, you know about this place. It was an unnamed POI, yet tons of people landed here, especially before Tilted. It was so popular, Epic even brought it back in Season X. Now you might have heard me mention this throughout the video, but we gotta talk about the season shop. This was the first version of the item shop with a catch. You had to level up just to unlock the cosmetics, and then you could pay for it with V-Bucks. Total mess, and every outfit was exclusive to the season it dropped in, so basically this was an early version of the battle pass, and thankfully, they changed it. Still not as chaotic as the Risky Reels chest challenge. For some reason, no one at Epic thought it was a bad idea to lock the first secret skin behind a ridiculous quest. You had to open seven chests that risky, causing the whole lobby to land here and try to complete it. Borderline impossible, and Epic even referenced it years later in this legacy achievement. So at this point, you're probably an OG. That means you'll definitely remember Orange Justice. Let's be honest, most chapter one players know about this. It was the dance of the year and the story was incredible. The Orange Shirt Kid entered the Boogie Down contest, was thought to be the clear winner, only to be ignored by Epic. The outrage from the community was so big, they added it to the battle pass with the name Justice. Now, if you recall the Storm Chaser Surf and LTM from earlier, we got surfboards, but these weren't that exclusive. They were a reskin of the Driftboards, a classic item that hasn't been in the game for years. People love these things. You can do insane tricks, boost around, climb mountains. We've wanted these back for so long, hope to get something similar with skateboards, but those also never released. Another bad ending was the fate of the block. I'm not talking about the one from Tilted Towers. I mean, the original POI that was in the game for quite some time. Every week, we got a new design made by the community and it was incredible. Some map makers even hit bonus loot in secrets so you would drop at their location. But things went too far when one creator added a controversial scene in a basement, causing headlines to point it out and Fortnite to remove the place entirely. Maybe you might've known that, but there's some players who have never heard of the Golden Mushroom. It was one of the rarest items in chapter two with a one in 10,000 chance of spawning. So if you were lucky enough to find it, you would earn a hundred shield in a second. And there was a detail hidden in almost every OG skin out there, which no one really talks about. A tiny tradition that was even in Fortnite's logo, dog tags. People look back on this years later, only to realize they're gone. We have no idea why, but now that I pointed it out, you'll never stop seeing it. Controversial, but also not. I just wish 100% chest spawns were still in the game. This was one of the best features in chapter two, allowing us to land at the same 
game plays every game and find chests in a guaranteed spot. POIs are more interesting and fun to land at, and nowadays you can land at your favorite place and have literally no loot. But back then, 100% chest spawn allowed us to create our own personalized drop spot that didn't rely on stupid RNG. Don't worry, I know I could not make a video on things OGs remember without bringing up a double pump. It's a strat that dominated Fortnite's meta for months, and some people claim that its removal ruined everything. We'd love to see this back for a week, maybe even in a custom mode, because it was honestly fun. Being able to pump, then switch and fire again immediately, so satisfying. Then we have the most famous weapon of Chapter 1, which is only in the game for a couple of days. There's only a handful of real clips out there with the Zapatron. That's how rare it is. If you're lucky enough to genuinely use this, you deserve a medal. Since they removed it, Fortnite has teased its return countless times, only to never bring it back. So maybe next season we'll fix that. Those were 100 things OGs remember. It's been Tommy. Keep it here on Top 5 Gaming.